What a day. I got just two more things I want you guys to think about tonight. I want to help you reflect on what you've heard today. And then I want to help you think about your future a little bit. You know, you've been given a lot of seeds today. Many different seeds. Which ones of those will germinate in you? Do this for a second. Can you imagine yourself as a garden? You might need to close your eyes. I'm not sure if anyone's ever asked you to be a garden before. Feel the seeds that have been given to you, planted in you today. Reflect for a minute on those seeds. Sustainable schools, energy innovations like batteries, a clean energy future. Using language well for sustainability. Valuing nature. Blue real estate. A new American dream. Getting youth into media. There's so many different seeds you've been given. And something different will germinate in each of you. What are you going to nourish? And if you decide to take something else on, are you going to trim back some of your other plants in your garden? Maybe remove something to provide room for this new germination. And did you ever have a situation where something grew in your garden that you didn't plant? I saw an onion come up in ours yesterday. <laughs> we didn't plant it. Where did it come from? Where did the volunteer plants come from that can grow in your garden? You know, the last 10 to 20 years, many of us have worked on recycling more, wasting less, using less energy, conserving water. The seed of the green movement has really taken hold in many individuals and companies and schools and, and communities. What if the green movement isn't enough? A woman named Krishna planted a seed in me a number of years ago, and I didn't want to nurture it. In fact, I ignored the seed for a number of years. Krishna is an architect and educator in Pretoria, South Africa. And she says sustainability isn't enough. She commands attention with her words. When she talks about cannibalism and insanity, that's difficult to try to absorb. But think about this. Nature operates on growth and decay. And in fact, decay is nutrition for growth. As David alluded to, Nature doesn't really recognize sustainability. Back to your garden for a second. Has anyone ever said, Mary, quite contrary, how sustainable is your garden? Right? As I said, her words and her meaning were something that were diff was difficult for me to Absorb. I felt like, you know what, our institute is doing green building and sustainable development, and we're, we're pushing industry, design and construction onto new ideas. We're doing plenty. But then a graduate student named Stephanie and a co-worker named Josie 
brought Christmas seed to life in me four years later. And this is what that seed looks like for us. There's a degenerative realm, and most of what we do is in that realm. Even today's green movement is mostly there. What do I mean? Well, we're working to use less fossil fuels and pollute less. We're trying to be less bad. We're not really trying to be good if we're trying to be less bad. So today's green movement is better than convention and better than many of our old ways. But if we really want to provide healthy, a healthy future for future generations, then we need to push beyond sustainability. Can you leap into that regenerative realm? Much of what you heard today will take you there. Grab on to some of those seeds. In fact, if your garden is producing more plants and flowers and vegetables than weeds, I would say you're in the regenerative realm in your garden. And so I'm not really saying don't worry about recycling and don't worry about conservation. Sure, we have to have a smaller footprint. But Bill McDonough challenges us to think beyond that. Can your garden be regenerative enough to have an eco footprint to delight in? That's a different mindset. Let me show you an example of something our institute has been involved in that I feel like is working its way toward that regenerative realm. And this is a garden. Many of you know Cheyenne, Wyoming as a, a dry, cold, windy place. It actually has a beautiful botanic gardens. And someone had a vision to have a children's sustainable village in the midst of the botanic gardens. It took a vision. Architects, landscape architects, engineers, our, our institute and, and our students got together with community members in Cheyenne and also staff at the Botanic Gardens. And we had a great day. We were in this old maintenance building talking about what it could be to be a children's sustainable village. We brainstormed many different things. We came up with a vision that, about a thriving, fun, educational place for children and their families. And somewhere along the way, we dropped the word sustainable from the children's village. And this is the children's village today. That's that same building that we met in, 1930s maintenance building. Facing south, we put glass doors so the sun could come in in the winter days. The sun's rays also warms the water from the panels on the roof. And you see a vertical axis wind turbine and more solar panels creating electricity with readouts that the children can see how many kilowatts are growing in their garden. The children learn about water, the importance of it in a dry climate. They learn about history and culture. They make adobe bricks. They learn to build with straw and clay. They use recycled and reused materials to create art. They're given seeds, and they grow them, and they water them, and they find out how much water it takes to grow various seeds in their dry climate. There's special water features in the garden where the more children get involved 
in the feature, the more the pump moves the water and the water flows quicker. An interactive learning place. So in 2008, this is the maintenance building that we went to. We certainly didn't sustain this. I would say it's rejuvenated. Here's a place where children learn and create and build. There's demonstrations inside and outside. There's trails and activities outside for children and their families to experience. A place for learning, a place for education, a place for growth. So what can you take away from this example? Well, here's a garden with a vision of growth, and it's about renewal and decay and growth. A vision for the future that's not about sustainability. It's about regeneration. And if your garden has that same idea, then you push toward growth and decay and renewal and rejuvenation and regeneration. Janine Benyus, who coined the term biomimicry, likes to say, if we can focus on creating conditions that are conducive to life, we're going to end up with better things that fit our world. It's a good thought. Janine says we should learn from other species. She says ask nature. Here's an example. A, an adhesive company said they needed to create a better marine glue for underwater. They studied how sea creatures, like a blue mussel, how does it adhere itself to rocks and a dock post as the tide comes in and out? They figured out that there's a, it secretes a protein. And this company created a new glue called Pure Bond, non-toxic, that mimics the blue muscle and has a soy-based protein that adheres better than their previous products. Biomimicry, creating conditions that are conducive to life. Can your garden create conditions conducive to life? Thomas Friedman, in his book, Hot, Flat, and Crowded, in his great last chapter of his book plays around with the word regeneration. You know, the seed that was planted in me by Krishna and then was nurtured by so many others along the way has taught me that there's still so much to learn and so much to create. Can your garden be about regeneration? What, what Hannah and her great team have created with this event, and what they sought to create in us, growing, greener generations. I'd like to encourage each one of you to push even further with your garden. Can you be the regeneration? Thank you.